amazing on Wednesdays, free until 11. So make sure you come. I will be here on Wednesdays also. Um, it was an awesome time. As you can see, you get painted. The people are fun. The vibe is fun. I love it. Make sure you hit up Club Cook tonight at Rehab. Yeah, what it do, man? It's going down, H Town. Real talk. Rap a lot for life. Real talk. Ace Hood. Next week, you know, at the Roxy, it's gonna go down. Real talk. Real YMCMB. Real talk. Next Wednesday night at the Roxy. That's where we going. You know, Ace Hood. Go be in the building. You know what it is. Rap a lot for life. Free boots and bitch. You know what I'm talking about? Holla, boy. Today we're going to talk about a little bit about him and what he do or what he's been through or what he did. Um, so, when was the last time you produced? Actually, the last time that I've worked within music production, it's been a couple of years ago. I've actually uh, worked with some, some independent artists that were, you know, looking for basically instruction and, you know, trying to get a feel and a grasp for the music business itself. And so because I've worked intricately within the music industry from writing, producing, managing, all of those aspects. I've, I've working with attorneys, entertaining attorneys is really how I got my start. Mm -hmm. I was working with some pretty good attorneys uh, back in Los Angeles where I'm from originally. And um, I felt a need with everything that was going on in the industry. A lot of young artists were basically being, in my opinion, being misdirected, manipulated, and taken advantage of in a lot of ways with regards to their um, their ignorance about the business itself. And you have a lot of great talent out there, people who are really great with writing and who are great musicians. But the problem with artists a lot of the time is that they want to focus on their craft. And they once they start getting involved in the business aspects of music, it takes away from that creative energy. And that's why you have the concept, in my opinion, of management. Mm -hmm. Managers are to help facilitate the business while the artist can actually use their energy for more create, creation. But I think that it's also a good thing when you have artists that are actually good business people as well who want to understand the business. And I think that's important for all artists. So. That's where my motivation came from, working with some attorneys, and I, I really don't want to say their name right now, um, but I learned from some of the best about the business, and I was able to bring that all together. And I wanted to kind of empower young, especially minority artists who have been so used to just following along with the game plan and not really knowing what was in store for them. and you know, who are more likely to be taken advantage of to kind of empower them, help them understand more things about the business and how to, you know, put their own um, production, you know, companies together. I mean, if you noticed in the early 80s, a lot of the, uh, what we call the underground um, gangster rap and stuff like that, if you look at it, a lot of those groups were the ones that kind of forged the area of independent record labels. It's because I think a lot of people from the urban environments, they understand the streets and they understand business in the streets and they understand you know, what's fair and what's not fair. So when a lot of these artists in, in, in hip hop, especially with regards to you know, more of your urban rap, I think they knew that it would be better for them to take control of their own destiny. So you had a lot of groups coming up with their own independent record labels, which I wanted to do. A, I wanted to help with that, with the facilitation of creating your own business. You know, getting, setting up your LLC or your S corporation. Um, how to understand royalties and, and points metrics and things like that. That once they get into these negotiations with uh, record companies, large okay. record companies, that they would know where they stand and and what they should be fighting for with regards to their own copywritten materials and things like that. So. I hope I didn't deviate too far. No. Okay. Um, so, with that said, what don't you like about the music industry? 
I guess what I don't like about the music industry would be, for the most part, what I believe to be the, the corruption within the, the, the higher rankings is when, when a lot of artists, when their talents are being exploited by a major record company, they are really put in a paradigm where, you know, they're in most cases given an advance. You know, we like you, we think you're great, so we're going to give you $200,000 to get your life together, you know, maybe get some equipment or whatever you need. And uh, what the purpose of the record of the large record companies is, is to, to basically, they're, they're concerned with molding an artist, you know. And a lot of the times, they are more likely to say, well, we like your style, but we think your style needs to be more like this. And, you know, that's a great song you wrote, but we have some other writers that we think are writing some material that's more relevant. So, you know, they start to take artists out of their natural place and try to mold them into what they think is going to be profitable for them because that's their purpose. They want to make profit off of your talent. So I think some artists get lost in the whole game of entertainment. And that's one thing that I don't like. I like to see artists fight for their own independence. And once you get that money, that advance, and all of a sudden you're, you know, you're getting the limousine rides, and you're getting the, the, the wardrobe stuff, and you're getting all the, 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 the aesthetics that the record company wants to build your image with, once you start selling records, you're not getting any of that money until all that advance is paid back. You know, so it, it, it gets kind of tricky. It's almost like, I hate to say this, selling your soul, but you just have to be careful about those contracts that you get into. And it's very good. You have to have great representation, and you just have to have a much, a really good, acute understanding of the business. So, so what do you do now? Well, I actually work professionally. I work as a software engineer as well as... Um, you know, I still work within music, helping artists out. You know, my focus since I've been back in Houston, um, I've been in, I was in D.C. for um, almost three years. And so I've been back in Houston for about two years and working in, in the energy industry as a software engineer. And uh, now that I've, you know, kind of uh, scaled that back a little bit, I'm, I'm looking to start promoting my studio and you know my efforts to help artists young especially young artists expose them to the industry try to teach them a little bit about the business as well as help them hone their craft of writing or you know music production or whatever it may be because technology has come so far people don't really need to go to these big studios anymore I mean you can get so much done with such great quality out of a small home studio you really don't need to go spend all of that money and you know, have those studios hold on to your masters until you know you're paid. You know all of that stuff. Yeah. I, I I like to teach young people how to acquire the equipment that they need, the technology that they need. Show them how to work it. Show them you know the structure and songwriting and and music production and how to market themselves, um, how to take care of business. Um, you know what to focus on, what not to focus on. Because a lot of young artists, they just want to get get their 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 um, their art off without really thinking about the intricacies of and the pitfalls that they may be able to run across. What inspired you to have your own home studio? Uh, I think because when I first got into actual production, we had a small production company in Los Angeles. Uh, we were spending. We were both my partner and I were working full time jobs, and in the evening times we were working with artists. And so we started finding that most artists didn't have a lot of money and a lot of resources to, to you know, hone their, their art. So ultimately, we would spend a lot of our own money promoting artists and take them to the studios and spending money. So eventually, we started acquiring our own equipment so that all the pre-production could be done on a very low budget within the home. And then once we got that concept where we liked it, then we would, you know, we would only have to spend a few hours in the studio mastering versus spending all of that creative time in the studio spending thousands of dollars. You know, it's best to be able to do most of the pre-production as low budget as possible so that you can spend you know, that money 
making that product come to life with, with all of the, you know, the things that you need, the nuances you need to add to it in, in, in the larger studio. So with L.A., the environment, how is it different from working in L.A. and Houston? Wow. Um, I think that Los Angeles and New York are your primary music hubs. So unfortunately, Detroit, you know, it's not really Detroit anymore. <laughs> you know, that was a long time ago. So I think for the most part, Los Angeles, the East Coast and West Coast were the primary hubs. Southern music, I actually went to college down south in New Orleans. And I started realizing when I was in college that um, most of the music, the, the, the southern market was the test market. If you were in the West Coast doing music, they would, your music would originally get played down south. I would hear music down south in New Orleans before it would even hit you know, the West Coast or the East Coast. So when I would go home for spring break or some, whatever, whatever the situation may be, I'd, I'd have tapes. I'm like, have you guys heard this? Have you heard that yet? And it still hadn't gotten out to the, to the West Coast or the East Coast because the South was a test market. But the South is really coming alive, and some great things are happening down south. I mean, if you think about everything from New Orleans, you know, New Orleans has, has had a very large impact on, on music going, you know, you know, hundreds of years. And um, I like what I've seen with music in Houston especially. I mean, I've seen a lot of artists, you know, put Houston on the map. And, um, you know, I, I've liked the progression that I've seen. So. I think that um, I, I prefer Houston to LA or New York or the or the East Coast. I like it here. Houston, great. I mean, the cost of living right now is good. Um, the economy is relatively stable compared to most of the rest of the continental U.S. Um, I like the atmosphere here. If you can handle the the humidity, you know, then you can handle Houston. And so, uh, I this is where I hope to continue to make my home. Actually. I, I, those are the vibes I get about this. You know. <laughs> okay, so would you start back producing or anything? Yes, I am in the process of, like I said, I've been scaling back my professional career because I do want to, I, I kind of want to move away from the corporate structure and get back into the craft of, of music and film and TV. I have a lot of concepts that I want to work on with TV and, and film. Um, but music will always be a an important part of my life in helping others understand how to create their business in that aspect. So um, yes, I, I am. I, I still have a studio at home, and I plan on opening up very soon to to young artists and and trying to help in that aspect. So yes. Okay. So what would people gain from working with you? Um, patience, understanding, and I I love to to educate. So not only are you getting, coming to my studio, not only are you getting state-of-the-art equipment and resources, but you're getting a wealth of knowledge about the industry, if you're interested, you know. And what I don't know, I have resources and I'm more than happy to share my resources with those, you know, where I can't, you know, where I might not have all of the information and I'm more than happy to put people in touch with people who can take it to that next step. So I think they're, they're getting a sincere person who really cares about the industry and the artists, and I'm not looking to take advantage of anyone. I want to make people, I, I want to, like I said, empower people and give them that confidence to understand the business as well as, you know, developing their craft of, of being an artist. So you'll be opening up your studio soon? Uh, yes. Actually, I'm, I'm in the process now of, you know, of, of talking with people who are interested in coming around. So, you know, like I said, my home, my studio is a home studio. So I'm not looking to have lines around the door, you know. You know, I'm, I'm very low key and, you know, I, you know, I work with a small hand, I want to work with a small handful of people, not a lot. So I'm kind of going to take my projects, <clears throat> I'm going to prioritize those based on the relationships that I develop. And those that I know are really sincere and ready to focus and commit to their, their craft are the people that I want to really help. Those that are still working it out, you know, well, we can work, but, you know, we'll, we're going we're gonna to pick the low-hanging fruit first and deal with the people who are ready to really, you know, focus. Okay. So... Maybe eventually I'll, you know, do a larger studio, but right now it's really small and it's 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 exactly 
exactly what people need to to get get started. Okay, so um, what are your expectations of yourself? Hmm, expectations of myself. Hmm. Um, I expect to continue to learn and grow. I'm always going to be a student of life. Um, I'm going to just continue to learn and grow and try to be the best human being I can possibly be and promote freedom and people expressing themselves and freedom of thought and just, you know, everyone needs to start raising themselves to that next level of, you know, of enlightenment, so to speak. So that's okay. what I expected to be a, um, you know, just to, you know, just to be the kind of person to kind of help pe motivate people to be the best that they can be. Okay, so how do you feel about Houston? Well, like I said, I, I, I like Houston. I'm here because, um, you know, it's Los Angeles is just, you know, that's my home. That's where I was born and raised, but it's really falling apart. You know, I don't really have a lot of comments about the East Coast because I've spent a lot of time out there, but I'm just not, I'm not as aware of, you know, the economics and the social structure there anymore. So I'm very comfortable here in Houston. I, I really like Houston. And, uh, and a lot of Texas, you know, I like Dallas, I love San Antonio, I spent a lot of time in San Antonio. Um, I don't know, I think I'm becoming a southern boy, you know, a <laughs> southern man, so to speak, I'm not a boy anymore. So. Okay, so I hear about this book, um, with about the music and... This business of music, know. yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm sorry I don't have the author's name, there are actually a couple of authors that are, you know, that are with that book, but I learned early on, I think I started with the second edition, but this business of music, I think, is a staple for all artists, producers, managers, even even A and R people. You know, to you know, be, it helps really get you familiar with the business of music, and that's what it's entitled: this business of music. So I endorse that book, and there are a lot of other books too. And I, I can't really, you know rattle off the names of these other books, but I think that's a staple book for every artist and anyone within the industry who wants to understand the business and the, you know, the uh, intricacies of business to have. Okay, well, he's thing you heard it here. If you want to know about music or you're in the industry any type of way, go get the book. What's the name of it? This Business of Music. Business of Music. Um, I have here Joaquin Norwood with me, and this is Houston Premier. And we're closing out. south side uh yeah i just wanted to let y'all know what's in store uh yeah you know we're gonna be shooting music videos we're gonna be shooting movies you know i got my movie coming up perm clark the movie uh we're gonna be working on a sequel called hustle god the movie that's gonna be part two okay so movies music videos you know you know i got a and r skills you know with the extensive resume you know and look I'm going to give y'all some advice in working with the A&R, okay? No attitudes, you know, and I, I see guys going in record deal meetings, up in there arguing, you know. They want to, you know what I'm saying, they go up in there with their team and they want to start talking to their team all messed up and being disrespectful and whatnot, trying to, you know, lose the egos, you know. Just if, imagine you going into a bank, you know, when you go into a bank, you're not going to be up in there arguing with the teller and telling a teller how much money is in your account. How much money is in your account is what you put in your bank account. I mean, it's wrong on so many levels. It's, plus, it's illegal, and you could go to jail for it, okay? 
So like I said, you know, so there ain't no point in, you know, fighting with your team. You know, don't be afraid. Don't run away from your money. You know, it, us as a people, as artists, you know, you always got to be, you always got to be on point with that type of stuff. All right. So just, just, you know, check out the programming, you know what I'm saying? Give us a feedback. You know, my YouTube is youtube.com forward slash Evan M. Marsh, E-V-A-N, M for Mario Marsh, but it's just the initial, but Evan M. Marsh is the YouTube page. So, you know, just put a, a friendship in there, you know what I'm saying? And, you know what I'm saying? Bounce ideas back and forth, you know? Your whole career is on you, okay? So just, just stay tuned. Watch the products we're dropping. And, you know, I appreciate y'all's support. You know, I appreciate the love. What's up? I appreciate everything, okay? So, we got a limited time schedule. Uh, I'm accepting artists, you know. We're putting together projects. You know, just let me know what you do, where you at. And, you know, I'm not with that bandwagon stuff. I'm sure you're aware of that. I'm not with that bandwagon stuff. There's no money in bandwagons except tickets to the game. You understand? So, thanks for your time, and you may return back to your normal programming. Much love. Southside. And you, the Maxi Park, this is Alameda Plaza. And I'm Evan, signing off. More music, more music. This is where it starts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alameda Plaza, Texas. Not Horn Clark, Alameda Plaza. We are, we are our own. We are only the part that we got. You dig what I'm saying? So look, you know what I understand about where we from and what we got and what we gonna do? The Rex and thing. He can wreck them today too. You know what I'm saying? You know, I get, I man, I, sometimes I get so frustrated. Guess what happened? I just get aggravated. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, hey. We finna, we finna crank this here up, man. We finna crank this here up, man. You know, I mean, we got a few yeah. music men up here. Yeah. You know, I'm the only poetry poet up here. May not be, you know what I'm saying? A whole lot of people gift in their own areas, you know what I'm saying? You know, I mean, I'm just saying, you know, if I was blessed to just have a. Yeah, I was just blessed, you know what I'm saying? Some people ain't, you know what I'm saying? So just, you know, settle with what you got, work with it, and keep it forward, you know what I'm saying? But I'm going to say this here. I say, man. I say I've always tried to remain in a humble state of mind through these trying times when in a bind. Haters on my heels, all up in my grill. So far down my throat, they can tell me my last meal. Ain't no justification for hating, so ain't no sense to contemplate, no debating your reasons for faking. I say, why are you cartooning, sitting around here like you silver spoon? You look like you came right out of a comic book playing that fake ass role. You ought to be shook. On a regular basis, you cloning, giving brothers your word, but you steadily postponing, acting like you having chillers and like you own it. You lie so much, you begin to believe your own lies. That's why I begin to categorize, at the same time analyze. Keep it real, because I'm going to survive. Ain't going to be brainwashed or hypnotized to any false allegations, accusations, and any bullshit lies. I said many haters in this world looking down on me. Like a dog cloud, they frown on me. They might try to set a brother and plant a pound on me. Interrogate me, why me, set me free, and place a crown on me. Hate me because you envy me. I know I'll make it look easy, but it ain't easy being me. My next move, you anticipating, so you're trying to strike up a conversation to bring back to administration, and you still wait. See, you got a life sentence, and you're scared with nothing to lose by giving your own people the blues, by bringing administration news, suited because you don't fit hustling and shoot. See, I done paid too many dudes to lose. That's why I switch up my moves to keep you confused. You see, when you find out what you think you seen wasn't what you saw, then blame me because that was all my fault. You see, I spotted you coming a mile away and you wonder how because the real is about the fake in the concert crowd. You ear hustling and trying to be a part of something you ain't. You can never be fake every day life but keep it real because you too soft with the pain. The fake will never take the real and the real will never take the fake because the real accepts its consequences even on this judgment day. So for your past sins, you're going to dwell in this jail. Then when you're going to switch and tell the man upstairs and your ass still going to burn in hell. Mm-hmm. <laughs>